hate to break it up, but uh, if we don't get out of here at noon, Larry will be so upset. He told me that yesterday, you know, he told me that. No, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> God bless you. We're so glad that you're here. I tell you what, we're kind of heavy on this side. I'm not talking about weight. We, we got a little bit of room over here, so we need to pray for some more. God bless you. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we're going to sing an old hymn that maybe a lot of you know, maybe you don't know, uh, but it's got some wonderful words we want you to sing with us. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for always being there. Lord, we thank you that you're as close as a prayer. And Father, we just ask that you would be with us today in everything that we do and sing and say. Lord, that it might be pleasing in your sight. Lord, that it might cause us to want to serve you better and, and to grow in you. And Father, I just thank you for each family each home, each individual that has come today. Lord, we ask your blessing upon them. Just just love them, watch over them. And God, we, uh, we just look forward to what you're going to do in this service today. And we want to give you all praise. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Maybe see you. Thank you.
Well, God bless you. We're so glad you're here, and uh, we want to welcome you here, especially if you're visiting with us. We have a few announcements that we want to remind you of. Um, uh, first of all, we're starting back our, or we started back last week, our uh, Wednesday night for all ages. We had we had a pretty good group on the first Wednesday, but help us to spread the word. Uh, it starts at six o'clock, and we have. Uh, something for for all ages so y'all y'all come and uh, we've got the teachers they're primed and ready and pumped and they're ready to uh, to share so y'all y'all come on Wednesday nights we have an adult uh, prayer meeting time in here and uh, we, we have a good time on Wednesdays we I, I, I enjoy Wednesday so uh, y'all be, be reminded of that and then um, also, uh, on the 27th, and that's a couple of Sundays from now, on the 27th, we're going to have a note burning for our lighthouse building. I think we can give God a hand for that. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a, an official note burning, kind of just celebrate that. And we're having a covered dish, and we have to uh, cook our food over the burning note. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, <laughs> we're going to have a covered dish meal. I hope you cook it before you bring it. Uh, and we're going to have that over there at uh, the lighthouse. And then we're also going to have a, a special uh, presentation that day. So we want you to be sure and put that on your calendar. Be here. Uh, you know, it's just one of those bring whatever you want to bring. And God always works it out. So uh, please, please be here for that. On the 27th, right after the morning service, we'll have have all of that that will go on. Uh, also, backing up a little bit, this Saturday, I've uh, been asked to announce that there's going to be a farmer's market downtown. Some of you may not know that, but every third Saturday, they have a farmer's market right next to the post office. And so, uh, you know, I may be interested in that. And uh, uh, does that have a special time it starts, or is it just... Nine o'clock, okay, it's on Saturday. The <coughs> Ma'am? In the trees, yes. Across the, street. Across the street, okay, not next to it. <coughs> Thank you. All right, so you'll find it, you'll see it down there, but <laughs> it's the farmer's market. Uh, y'all, y'all be reminded about that. Also, um, we've been asked as a church <coughs> to have a special prayer time for um, a couple of people. I know there's a lot of folks that need our prayers and we certainly will pray for them, but uh, Shelby uh, Davenport, I, I mentioned, I think last week, the book that they had written about her. Well, she's kind of had a setback with her eyesight, and uh, they don't really know uh, what's going to happen, but she's losing her life, eyesight very quickly. Uh, they're praying that it's not related to her disease. Those of you that know who, her and know who I'm talking about, it's not related to her disease, but... Um, it, it could be something else that's going on but y'all they ask that we especially pray for her she's going through a lot of tests and stuff so uh, she's really very special to us as a family and to our church so her name is Shelby Davenport so y'all remember her and also uh, Sarah Thompson called last night and asked that we remember her son Gilbert many of you know Gilbert Thompson um, He's in Austin. Uh, he has cancer. Uh, he asked that the church pray for him. She told me something that was really pretty amazing when you think about it. She said that her son, Gilbert, said, uh, I am thankful to God that I got this cancer because it saved my life and, and turned his life around. So, you know, that's that's amazing to have that kind of attitude Amen. and so um, be in prayer for him and be in prayer for the family as they're trying to be there with him and uh, so uh, Gilbert Thompson Shelby Davenport okay all right Can I yeah. yes we've been praying for uh, Lee Scribner uh, her uh, his wife was kind of the regional director for OCC. I think that's her title. She's over us. Yeah. O over us, anyway, with uh, Operation Christmas Child. Uh, her husband passed away this week, and so we want to. We've been praying for him for weeks, and 
we just want to remember them in prayer too at this time. So All right. Can we add yes, ma'am. Another His name is Garrison, Garrison Wood. Okay, so we want to remember him. We remember him in prayer. Sixteen. Wow, uh, this this heat is serious. It's a serious thing. It really is. Uh, gosh, we'll be praying for him too. All right. Anything else or anybody else? We got some more announcements, but let, let's have a word of prayer right now for them, and then we'll finish our announcements. So. Father, we, uh, we bow our heads right now, and we know that your word says that if we agree on earth, it, be, it shall, shall be established in heaven. So right now, uh, there, there are so many prayer needs around us, so many people who need your prayers, and we, we lift them up to you. But Lord, we, we want to mention these four, uh, especially this young man, uh, Garrett, and I may have said that wrong, but Lord, you know him, and so we, we lift him up to you. We also want to remember the Scribner family, and we especially want to pray for Shelby and also for Gilbert Thompson. So God, we ask that you would, uh, and they're all so different, such great needs, uh, but Lord, we know that you're able and we, we have seen you work, and we know that you can do great and mighty things. So, Lord, we lift them up to you today as a, as a people. We pray for them. And, Lord, we just thank you that you, you hear our prayers. We thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do in their life. And we pray that you would be glorified in their lives. Lord, we, in these families. And, God, we just give you all praise, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I think um, we have a couple of other announcements. I'm going to take the mic just so everybody can hear, but they're in, in the nest. So each have something to say. <laughs> um, just a quick reminder about the Women's Bible Study. Uh, we have one more week. It's coming not this Monday, but the next one. So I just wanted to give you all a reminder to get the book. Um, just to let you know, this, we're not just studying like a person's words. This is just a guideline into studying at the word, which is Genesis. We're in Genesis 1 through 11. And so I just wanted to encourage y'all to that. And I wanted y'all also to not be like, we have all sorts around that table. We're not all Bible scholars. We have seekers that haven't even gone all in with Jesus. They're still trying to figure it out. We have those that are just beginners and they're trying to learn. And then we have people that have been walking with the Lord a long time. So there is a faith <coughs> at this table for each and every person. Uh, when, sorry, girls only. But <laughs> y'all, guys would feel out of place. But um, anyway, just want to give a reminder. If you look on Facebook, it has a link to get the book. What is the book? Oh, sorry. Uh, God of Creation. If you have any questions about it, you can ask <laughs> Well, this Bible study includes everybody, men and women. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matthew 17. Uh, Jesus went up onto a high mountain, and he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. We're going to kick off a new Bible study, and the title of the Bible study is, um, is Moses, Elijah, and Jesus the Messiah. 
And the Bible study is going to, uh, we're going to walk through the transfiguration, but we're also going to study the life of Moses. We're going to study the life of Elijah. We're going to talk about some of the foreshadowing that happens in the Old Testament that shows the coming of Jesus. So I'm really excited of, about this. Uh, I have learned a lot uh, just even putting it to, together. Uh, the material is pretty amazing. So um, that's what it's going to be about. We are going to offer this twice a week. So it's the same lesson two times a week. So you could either come on Sunday mornings at 10 in a Sunday school class back behind here or Wednesday nights at 6, six, six o'clock. Right and it'll, it'll take it each, it'll be 30 to 40 minutes, uh, 35 to 40 minutes, and it's going to be about a 10 to 12 week study. And all you need is your Bible and you need a pen and a piece of paper. And it's going to be fun. It's not just going to be... Uh, well, there'll be a lot of me talking, but there'll be more than me talking. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, the, pur the really the purpose of this is uh, there is uh, building our knowledge in Proverbs that says that it is pleasant for the soul. Building of knowledge is pleasant for the soul uh, to strengthen our faith and to learn from some of the Old Testament leaders. So uh, we'll, we'll announce this another couple times, but please either plan on coming on Sunday or Wednesday. All right, and he didn't really say this, but he wrote all this material and came up with this material, so I know it's going to be good, and y'all can be in prayer about that, and you can come maybe on one of these two times. It's going to start on the first uh, Sunday of September and the first Wednesday of September, okay? So you got a little while to start in September, okay? All right, one other thing, uh, all the men who are here who are interested, uh, Larry needs to meet with you just for a very short time right after the service. I'm going to say that in case I forget when we close it down. But uh, it's, it's concerning reading the scripture and, and some things that we ask the men to do so we can get a list and stuff like that. So, But he'll, he'll tell you all that. But if you'll meet right after the service, just here, right here, right here, real quick. All right. Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. All right, we need a first and second grade teacher on Wednesday nights. So if God's laying that on your heart, we need to, we need to do that. So let Barbara know or me know or some of us teachers on Wednesday night know. So. Yeah, we, we've got a lot of boxes for OCC and... Uh, if we could get some young people or somebody to help unload some boxes right after the service, we appreciate that too. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on. That's good. That's good. All right. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. His name is Colton. Colton Hobbs. Hobbs. Colton Hobbs. I that. And you had another one?
Emily also, I mean, let's pray. Father, we just pray for these three that more that we mentioned, Colton and Georgia and Emily. Lord, you, you know every situation. And again, we know that you're the answer. And we just, we, we pray for them and lift them up to you. And we thank you for their faith, Lord. We thank you that they are even witnessing in pain. They're witnessing for you. And God, they're, they're they're speaking to us in our service today. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, and we just lift them up to you and pray for them. God, we just look forward to hear, hearing what you're going to do in their life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. Well, if we could have our children uh, for Children's Church and our uh, ushers to come to take our offering. The plates right here behind us. Let's give Miss Lisa and all these young people that are up here a big hand. Man. This is great. Amen. All right, let's have a let's have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll uh, take our offering, and I'll hand this mic to Lisa in just a minute. So let's let's pray. Uh, let's see, Brother Larry, would you would you lead us in that prayer, please? First week of school go. Good. Oh, I knew you'd say that, Jackie. Um, I, I tell me something good that happened at school this or in your life at all this week. Oh, Lainey's got something good to say from yesterday. The day before yesterday, don't you? I got first place in the ballet. That's right. That's right. Anybody else have something good? We got to do a science experiment in our car. Uh-huh. That's cool. Anybody else have something good? Tell me something good. We um, colored pictures. Did you like that? That was fun. Tell me something new. I went to Zane's birthday party. You went what? Zane's birthday party. Zane's birthday party. So something else good is Zane had a birthday, right? Yay. I got to do a rodeo. You did? What did you do in the rodeo? She got to tie a goat, brand it, and milk it. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Colt, did you have something else? You raised your hand. I didn't know if you were really raising. There we go. Um, I got a 2960 in my barrel racing. 2960? That was my first ever. Like All right. Okay. Okay. I was like, I don't know what that means. Okay, now I understand. Awesome, guys. All right, so when you really need to, you can think of something good, right? You can think of something. Even if you can, I used to tell Faith when she was little and she had a bad dream, we would try to think of something good like um, puppies or kitties. 
playing with a mess of puppies or kitties or little sweet things that, that pretty flowers in the fields and horses running and some of you hunting, uh, fishing, you know, the good things, right? Well, did anyone bring their Bible? I want you to read Philippians 4, 8. the message version because it's a little more kid friendly on words it says summing it all up friends I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating meditating means you just continue thinking about on things that are true if someone's lying don't think about the lie think about what is true um, if it's reputable that means um, good reputation uh, oh goodness I think that's kids word for that one too uh, alright let's keep going uh, compelling gracious the best here's my words the best not the worst the beautiful not the ugly things to be to praise not things to curse and uh, so there we're talking about things um, I lost my train of thought Sorry. <laughs> um, so I want you to think about um, what you do in the day. What do you watch on your tablet? What are you watching on YouTube? What are you watching on TikTok? What are you watching and listening to when you are in school and when you're not in school? If it's a good thing, and you'll know, your spirit will bear witness. You'll feel it. You'll feel that, hmm, I probably shouldn't be watching or listening to this. Um, if you do what's right, if you go, wait a minute, okay, I really shouldn't be watching or listening to this. I'm going to stop. I'm going to find something good to watch or listen to, okay? That's going to help your mind, and God's going to give you peace in your life that even if something terrible is going on, you will feel a peace. Sound good? All right. Anybody new wants to pray? Somebody who hasn't prayed before. Let's see. We have, we have. Hannah, you want to pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the beautiful day. Lord, thank you for many blessings, Lord. Please help us to just learn of your word, Lord, and please keep us safe when we drop home, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 scripture reading this morning comes from James chapter 4 verses 7 and 8 it says submit yourselves then to God resist the devil and he will flee from you come near to God and he will come near to you wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded a couple of key notes about it says when the speech is motivated by Satan it's, it's bitter envy selfish 
earthly concerns and desires, unspiritual thoughts and ideals, disorder and evil. God in his wisdom is mercy, love for others, peace, consideration for others, submission, sincerity, impartiality, and righteousness. Our world has a lot of work, but it starts with uh, humility. It starts with this, reading it, getting into the word. There's a lot, a lot of words and things that can be answered through the Bible. We all know that. And um, God gives us that opportunity in our lives today. Let us pray. Again, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the, the members that are here, the ones that couldn't make it, dear Lord, to keep them safe as they travel, or whatever the reason is, dear God, you know their hearts. Help us to go ahead and influence this, uh, this country we live in. Help us to get out of our comfort zones, dear God, and to, to preach, to pray with people. A lot of people need it in things, and, and if we see it and witness to them, I guarantee you their hearts will change. You gave us your son, Jesus Christ, and, and in his and in your thoughts and minds that uh, the greatest gifts of all, that we were worth that. Dear God, help us to, to go through the week a positive. Dear Lord, we, we lift these people up again to you, the sick. And dear Lord, we know that you're going to heal them. As Brother Stan brings this message to us this morning, help us to take it and grasp it and apply it to our lives, dear Lord. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, while our praise team is coming, I want to uh, give some Bibles to the folks who are here that we baptized recently. Uh, if y'all would come up, uh, Hudson and uh, Had Hadlin, if y'all would come up here, and Phoebe. Phoebe's here, isn't she? We haven't had a chance to give you, Phoebe. Phoebe go. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Y'all stand up here and look that way. All right. They didn't want to look at y'all, but uh, this is a good learning uh, process for them. We're, we're so proud of these young people who've been obedient to the Lord, uh, who have come to know Him as their Lord and Savior, and have followed him in baptism and we would like to present them with the bible and we've also got some other bags here before y'all go see it, be seated y'all can get those okay uh, that a wonderful person in our church makes available to you so we want to um, pray for you because we want you to take those bibles that you have i know you probably got some bibles at home right but this this will be a, a bible that we present to you and we want you to Take that Bible and read it at night or in the morning or whenever you get a chance. We want you to wear these Bibles out, okay? We all do that? Because like Larry said, the, the Word of God is so important. So we want to share that with you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these three uh, students. I thank you for their lives. Lord, I thank you for their families that brought them to this point. And I thank you for uh, their willingness to... Take a stand for you and to come and walk down the aisle and stand in front of people, Lord, because your word says that if we confess you before men, uh, that, that Jesus will confess us before the, the Father. So, Lord, they're, they're standing up for you, and God, help them to always do that in their life. Help them to take this Bible and to read it, to know what it says, uh, to listen to what it says, and to do what it says. God, we just thank you for uh, these three lives, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all right, give him a hand.
Your faithfulness. 
next one it's an old um older chorus a praise chorus and we're going to go through the same chorus twice and then on the third time just really lift your voices we're going to drop the instruments out and i just want to i want you to just lift your voice this is jesus name above all names and it talks about um all the many names that we call him and all the many things that he is to us so just sing out on that third one
Father, we just thank you for bringing us to your house this morning to worship you, Father, in truth and in spirit. And Lord, we just ask you to be with those who've already been mentioned. Lord, there have been so many prayers lifted up this morning already, and, and there's so many battles that are being fought. Father, there are many people here that have been mentioned who are fighting for their very lives, Father. And we just pray that you would just touch them and heal them if it be your will, Father. And be with those who are, who are comforting them, who are standing beside them, Lord. Just, Lord, just give them peace to get through this battle, Father. And we just claim the victory through your name, Jesus' name. Father, we just ask you to be with us through the rest of this service, that, we, that you would give, Brother Stan, the words you would have him to say to us, Father, and that you would just help us to open our hearts and our minds, Father, to receive that word from you this morning. We ask all these favors and blessings in Jesus' name. here before you today and I have seven minutes <laughs> I left myself seven minutes six and a half three and a half. Oh, three and a half. your clock's wrong <laughs> we're gonna go by my clock <laughs> I'll preach real fast can y'all listen fast all right if you have your Bible uh, it's gonna take a little while to come up so you're gonna have to really turn in your own Bible or, or the Bible in front of you. We have some, some in the pews, okay? Uh, but we're in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. It's kind of interesting. Uh, we've been talking a lot out of the book of Acts on Wednesday nights. And then uh, we started a study in our men's Bible study, uh, our monthly Bible study. And we're going through the book of Acts. And uh, the Lord had kind of put this on my heart this week. And it's also out of Acts. So maybe we need to listen as God speaks to us. Acts chapter 2, just to catch you up uh, where this scripture is that we're going to read. It's verse 17, verse 17, 2 verse 17. Uh, just to catch you up, this is uh, on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. And um, there were all kinds of people in Jerusalem. And God came down and caused them to speak in different languages so that everybody could hear the gospel everybody could hear about jesus and they were amazed they were amazed that they they said you know these are just people from galilee they were just you know fishermen and stuff from galilee and and here they are speaking in different languages from countries that were way off and so they were speaking languages and they were hearing the word of god in their own language and some of them who were there uh, you know, just, you know, they thought, well, they, they must be drunk or something, you know. I didn't know that when you got drunk, you could speak a, di a different language. But anyway, they said they might, they're drunk or something. There's something uh, going on here. That they didn't understand what was going on. So Peter stood up and said, listen, I want to tell you, these people are not drunk. So let's read together. Um, I tell you what, yeah, well, I hate to pull this on the right end, but. We're going to back up a little bit. You ready? I know. I just talked to you, and I, uh, you ought to know me better. All right, verse 14. We're going to back up to verse 14. We're going to start right there, okay? Verse 14. And she'll catch up. All right, then Peter stood up with the 11, the 11 disciples, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. 
Follow, uh, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is truly, um, it, it is only nine in the morning. Now, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. So in Joel chapter 2, we find these exact words. But, um, but here, Peter, Peter uh, memorized these verses somehow, and uh, God gave them to him, and he spoke them. This was the first thing that he said to them. He said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your word that we have here that we can read. And we pray, Lord, that you would just speak to our hearts. Show us those truths that you have for us today. And God, uh, we just pray that your will would be done. We love you, Father. You're so good. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So he uh, spoke from the prophet Joel. He, he told of this prophecy that was, that was going to come. He was referring to what had just happened and what all those people had seen, how there had been signs and they spoke in other languages and all of that. That's what he was talking about. The, there in Joel, when, he was, when it was prophesied, was talking about that day. But you know the wonderful thing about the scripture is that it's not, it, many times it's not only for that day present, but it's also for the future, it's for us. And that's why it's in scripture. That's, that's why we need to listen to what it says. We need to hear what it says. And, and just to break it down, I want you to realize that he talked about all people. He stood and he said, listen, all of you listen to what I have to say. <clears throat> and even in the scripture, he mentioned different people. He mentioned sons and daughters. He mentioned the young and the old. He mentioned servants, men and women. Uh, and, and he said that all ages have a place in what God is trying to do. And I think that's important for us to understand and to realize all ages are important to God. Whether you're young or you're old or in between, whether you're busy with, with jobs or you're retired or you haven't yet got your job, whether you're going to school or you've been out of school a long time, none of that matters. What God says is I'm, I'm gonna use all ages of people and all kinds of people and I tell you what, we need to listen to that. We need to, it's, it's so amazing to me how God is raising up so many of our children and so many of our young people. I think that's because he's, he's preparing that army to march for him and to work for him. That young, they're young now, we need to help them to grow up in the Lord and they will become warriors for Christ. And uh, it, it, it's so amazing. We, we sometimes think, well, you know, we, we kind of break ourselves down in groups. You know, well, we're the young people. We're the children. We're the middle-aged people. We're the senior adults. We're the older people. But, you know, we need, to, we need to avoid that because we can learn from all ages. We can learn from all ages. We, we need the enthusiasm and the energy of the young. We need the wisdom of the old. We need the steadfastness and the, the faithfulness of those who are trying to raise their family, trying to do a job and trying to serve the Lord all at the same time. We all need one another in the kingdom of God. The, the scripture says no man is an island. 
And how true that is. We need one another so badly. And we need to listen to these kids. I tell you what, I've learned a lot from children. We worked with uh, the preschool for a long time, and and uh, I loved going up there and and uh, just kind of listening. Most of the time, we had teachers and stuff, so I got to float around. And uh, and I learned a lot from those kids, from those little kids. And uh, hopefully, they learned a little bit from us as we tried to, you know, tell them about Jesus and uh, tell them uh, scripture, teach them scripture. But the, the Bible here says that all ages, it's talking about ages, all ages will prophesy. Uh, now, you know, when we think of that word prophesy, we think of the Old Testament prophets. prophets. But I think in this instance, he's talking about, uh, you know, will tell people about Jesus. They'll prophesy about who Jesus is. And friends, I think today, more than any other time in the history of the world, God's people need to be telling others about Jesus. Because I believe that, that we're, uh, if not very close, uh, we're, if we're not in, we're very close to the end times. And God's people need to stand up for what's right. When we see all the sin that's around us, even in our own government, in our own country, you know, we used to say that we're a Christian nation. Friends, we're not a Christian nation anymore. In the sense that everybody's trying to to, to serve God and knows about Jesus and knows about church. That's not true. We as Christians, maybe some of us have been in church all our lives. Maybe we haven't been a Christian very long, but we need to stand up for what's right. We need to stand up for what the Bible says, no matter how old we are, no matter who we are. <coughs> It also mentions that there will be wonders and signs. He said God's going to send wonders and signs. Um, I, I, I like to title that the actions of an awesome God. God is going to show himself in our world today. He's already doing it. It mentioned blood and fire and billows of smoke. I don't know whether you know it or not, but maybe you don't uh, listen to the um, news quite like I do, but there's a lot of crime all over our country, a lot of crime that we never hear about or never know about. Crime is on the rise all around us, and we can talk about, oh, well, um, the government's not doing what's right, they're not upholding the laws, the Police are not doing what they ought to be doing. All of this kind of stuff. We can talk about that all day, but, but I want to tell you, one of the ways we need to look at that is that we need to realize that God, it, this is the last days. And that God is allowing these things to happen. Or these things are happening, even though God doesn't want them to happen. These things are happening in our world today. And we need to look at that and say, oh my we need to get we need to get busy telling people about Jesus. We need to we need to stand up and be the Christians that we ought to be that God wants us to be. He said it mentions fire and billows of smoke. Did y'all? Uh, I'm sure that many of you have seen on the news um, how Maui, the island of Maui, is it's on fire. It's it it burned down. It, it's it's. Uh, it looks like worse than a war zone. Some of y'all may not know that, but it's it's amazing. If you've seen some of the pictures, when I read this, it said fire and billows of smoke. That's all you see in the pictures as they're uh, scanning the, the horizon. It's just fire and billows of smoke and houses and buildings and cars and everything just it's burning up all around them. Uh, they started off and said... There's over 40 people that have died, confirmed. And I thought, that's amazing that in a fire, you know, you know, when a fire happens, you have time, you know, hopefully, and I know it not always, but hopefully you have time to get out, right, uh, Tommy? But some people don't have an opportunity to, to get out. And I thought, that's amazing, 40 people. And then, it's, then it went to 50s, and then it went to the 60s. And now they said there may be as many as a thousand people because they don't have any idea where they are. 
that may have lost their lives. It's, it's unbelievable. I was, I was trying to get there. Uh, and and that, that's, that's the worst one. But did you know, did you know that there are 199 uh, forest fires or brush fires or, you know, this, this, there's 199 going on in the state of Texas currently, right now. 199. And not only in our state, it's, it's more in, um, in Texas, but it, it's a lot of other states too. Let me get to it. It's in Arizona, Montana, New Jersey, and I'm talking about multiple fires. I'm not talking about one fire. And some of them, you know, 17, 20 fires. Texas by far has the most, 199. Washington State, Oregon, Colorado, Florida, California, Nevada, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Oklahoma. Those are the current fires. Uh, even, even in New Jersey, I may have said New Jersey, but even in New Jersey, some of the biggest fires that are going on right now as we're sitting here. And we don't, we don't get, we don't, some of it we see, if you're local, you know about it, but we might see that that's going on in, um, in Hawaii. Uh, the, these fires that's just coming across our country. I don't, I don't know whether you know it or not, but if, if the right spark happened in the right place, this whole central Texas area could be on fire. And, you know, we can look at it like, oh, that's so terrible. And it is terrible. We can look at it like, oh, we need to, oh, we need to pray for rain. And we, we have been praying for rain. We need, we need rain. But we need to look at it in another way that God may be trying to get our attention. God may be saying to us, listen, these are the end times. And I'm showing you what can happen. I'm showing you that we need to be ready. I'm showing you that you need to get busy telling other people about Jesus. And it even not only tells us about what's going on now, but it talks about uh, how the, the moon is going to turn to blood and the sun's going to turn dark. I think that's in the future, right? That's going to be in the future. We, we've seen some blood moons and stuff like that. But I, I think it, that that's going to be in the future. And God is not only telling us what's going on now, or showing us what's going on now, but he's showing us there's, there's more to come. And you need to be ready. And you need to be the Christian that God wants you to be. It's present and in the future. It's proof of him and it's a warning. More to come. But it also at the end of it, this prophecy... And I think it's very interesting that even in the Old Testament, it said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It gives us the answer to all this. It, you know, if we, just, if we just stopped with all the fire and the crime and all of that, it would be bad. If we thought about, oh man, you know, there's going to be phenomenons in the sky and in our universe. What in the world is going on? If we stopped right there, it would be bad. But he gave an answer to all of that. And it's very simple. It's very straightforward. It has to do with our soul. It has to do with our relationship with Jesus. And he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's the same thing that it says in Romans 10 and 13. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, Peter uh, memorized that verse out of Joel and he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friends, it's amazing to me in our country and even in our churches and we, um, you know, some of us have been to church a whole lot in our lives. That we can hear those words but we don't take it to heart. We don't believe it. We've got to do something. You know, I'm not good enough. I, I've got to do so, this and this and this before I can get to a point where I can say, okay, I'll be saved. I want to be saved. 
it's amazing to me that we just don't listen to what God has to say to us. The answer that he's given to all of us, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know you all have heard those verses over in Ephesians. Ephesians um, 2, verse 8 and 9. And it, it, and it says, and y'all, y'all know these, y'all know this. It's, it says, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. It's not. We're not saved. We're saved by faith. We're not saved by works. It's not good things that we do. It's his grace and his mercy that gives us salvation. And none of us can boast and say, I've done it myself. I've done it. I've, I've attained the salvation. No. You may have received salvation from Jesus, but none of us are good enough to attain it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friends, that's the best way to get ready for whatever the future holds. It's kind of scary, isn't it? You know, when you read some of those things over in the book of Revelation, when you read some of the prophecies in the Old Testament about what's going to happen, when we hear people talking about the great tribulation and all of the prices and all of the, you know, all the stuff that's going to go on in our world, the, 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 the uh, you know, being branded and, and having to have a, a number on, on our forehead uh, in order to buy groceries and things like that. When we hear about all that stuff, it's kind of frightening. But listen, I want to tell you that if we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, my belief is that we're going to be raptured out of here before that starts happening. And that's the answer. That's the answer. And we need to tell as many people as we can about Jesus before we go, before all these things, bad, worse things start happening. We've, God is warning us all along the way. Now, Peter was talking to those Christians. I mean, not Christian, but he was talking to those Jews there who were listening to him that day and had seen those Christians speak in different languages and had heard about Jesus. And on that day, he told them, you crucified Jesus, but he is the Savior. And that day, thousands were saved. Thousands were saved. Thousands came to know Jesus. And that's, you know, that's what God wants to do today. And I, I don't think it was just the preaching of Peter. Uh, I think he had a lot to do with it. He was that first, you know, preacher that stood up and, and preached that sermon. But I think there were a lot, of, uh, you know, a lot of others because God gave him those languages, you know. There were a lot of others that told others about Jesus. And that's what needs to happen in our world today. You need to go to school and you need to tell people about Jesus. They may not like it. They may turn away from you, but they'll hear it. And more than likely, they'll never forget it. You need to go to work and you need to tell people about Jesus. Because there are people at your work that you love and you walk alongside and you work with. You need to make sure they know who Jesus is. You need to tell people in the community, in your uh, get-togethers, you need to tell people in the grocery store, at the gas station, wherever you might be, you need to tell your neighbors. You need to tell your family so that they'll know. They may laugh at you. They may turn away from you. They may not listen. But later on, they, they may come to you and say, you know, remember what you said? I want to know what you're talking about. I want to know what you're talking about. And you'll have a chance to lead them to Christ. What does God want us to do? Isn't it amazing that the prophecy of thousands of years ago was for the day of Pentecost, and it's for today in America, in Bremon, right now, right where we are. That's the way the Word of God is. Let's all stand. Let's all stand.
Father, as we bow our heads, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, show us those things that we need to do. If there are any who need to make decisions today, we pray that they would come and before the whole church, before everybody, they would, they would let us know what you're doing in their heart and their life. God, there may be some we need to pray here at this altar. There may be some who need to just kneel down where they are or sit down right where they are and pray. But God, I pray that you would work in our hearts and lives today and your will would be done. Lord, we seek your face. We want you to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If God's speaking to you, you come. So glad you're here today. Um, just again, we want to remind you about Wednesday nights. We want to remind you about the 27th. Uh, we're going to have a covered dish meal and uh, uh, no burning and all that stuff. It's, it's going to be a special day. And then uh, also we want to remind you um, about uh, the ladies' Bible study is starting and not this week, but next week, next Monday. And we also want to ask our men in our church, if you'd meet with Larry, if you'd be willing to read scriptures and stuff like that, with just uh, a few things that he wants to talk with them about. Real quick, I'm going to put a, a, a note or a, a list back there. If God's wanting you to participate in scripture reading, it's not a deacon thing. And that I'm going to invite the men who want to do this. Let the... Let God influence you through Scripture to talk to, uh, to uh, you do Scripture in the church. Uh, you don't have to be, uh, I mean, very high up there. I'm short in that. And, and if the hair doesn't fall out when you do this, trust me. I know Theron's losing his, but it is what it is in the process. Don't be laughing. We ain't do the same thing to you. So, anyway, but this, the list will be there. If God's leading you to do this, uh, pray about it and things, um, it's heartfelt and things. We all know what y'all can speak. We all can read and things so participate uh it's not it's probably gonna be maybe once every six months that your name may come back if, if it doesn't then that uh, contact me or contact somebody else to fill the spot in things and uh it's a it's 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 a good ministry a good thing to do and and for the men to step up again and thanks uh Mr. Gary, you're cutting up hang in there <laughs> so anyway but Participate with this, and like I said, if you want to, find uh, sign the list. 
and we'll get it together and uh, and go from there. Next week, I'll put the paper out there, and whoever feels like they want to do this, to go there. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll have the paper today. They're working on it right now, Larry. So okay. uh, as today, you see, it'll be in the back. and uh, so we don't need to have a meeting right after, right? No, that was no, it. no, this is it. All right. Uh, one other thing, we want to remind our deacons, those who are you know thinking about becoming deacons. Uh, we're continuing our deacon study at uh, 5 o'clock and uh, then praise team at 6, I suppose. And then uh, we have the life, finished life, uh, whatever it's called, life group uh, meets at 7. So 5, 6, and 7 tonight. So God bless you. Uh, we're so glad you're here. I didn't keep you, I didn't finish in seven minutes. Yes, ma'am. Oh yes, um, <laughs> more announcements. Uh, uh, we are trying to post uh, on Facebook uh, the music that we're going to have on Sunday, so that you can kind of, you know, get into it. Maybe look look it up. Say, oh, I've never heard that song. Maybe you can listen to it on the on the on the phone, uh, so that you'll know what we're planning on doing. Um, also on YouTube, we have we have our services on YouTube. If you will go and register on YouTube. Um, and if we get a good number and people are watching the service, uh, we, we can get uh, monetized where we can get money. The church can receive money from that. So I don't know if we'll have that many will be able to do it, but you might want to do that. Or if you miss some Sunday, you can look at it on YouTube. Uh, also, um, yeah, just subscribe. And the, we get the we get the message out to the world. It's not just here. It's not just in Bremont. World Wide Web. <laughs> world Wide Web. And we can get God's message out to the world. So we're trying to reach out. I don't know whether you know it or not. We we do our services. Was it last week or maybe a week before last? We had 481 people view our service. Maybe not all of it, but parts of it. But 481 people got on there and watched uh, the service. That's besides what we have here. It, isn't that amazing? That I mean, Amen. it's just amazing to me. Uh, you know, I mean, that's hundreds and hundreds of people. So uh, y'all continue. Yeah, and it can go worldwide. You may. I, I'm that old man dreaming dreams that I just talked about. Right there. I'm that old man dreaming dreams. So here we go, God. It's all up to you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. I thank you for the word that you gave to us. I thank you for the worship we had. I thank you for the, uh, the, the example of the children, young people who were up here. I thank you for our praise team. I just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, and we give you all praise. Be with us as we travel home. Keep everybody safe. Help us to come back to serve you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.